Hi class, I wanted to make a short video and discuss with you real quickly uh, what figure 3.6 means. This is uh, outcome, let's see, 6G.4, where it discusses the difference between an ideal, ideal, approximate, and real diode. Um, figure 3.6 uh, looks like this, where voltage across a diode and current are plotted relative to one another. And a real diode will have a curve that looks like this, where um, at some point uh, the diode will turn on and then uh, slowly grad increase in current up to some voltage where the current or the voltage won't uh, drop anymore across the diode. What that means is, so if we have a diode, um, and if we start passing current through that diode, then it's going to consume a certain amount of voltage. At a low current, it's going to consume only a low amount of voltage, kind of like a resistor consumes or wastes voltage. But up to a point, we can get almost infinite amount of current uh, with the same amount of voltage drop. Uh, typically this is about 0.7 volts. Um, and the same diode, in if we try to make current go backwards, uh, it will resist a lot of voltage up to a point when it starts to break down. And this is typically never drawn a scale, but it's typically about minus 100 volts or something large. So uh, a diode is basically like a check gate, allowing uh, current to flow really in one direction. But if we put enough voltage going the opposite direction, it will break down and we will have current passing backwards through the diode. Um, so this is what a real diode looks like. What happens is we have a small amount of current once we allow uh, positive voltage and uh, that current will increase until we get to some set um, voltage drop, then we can allow almost as much current as we want at that voltage drop. Because this curve is kind of weird, um, we don't really want to uh, model our diodes like this. We're going to simplify it. And uh, one simplification is the ideal diode, what, what we really wish a diode would be like. And that would be, first of all, it would always resist negative voltage, meaning you would never let current go backwards but it would not consume any voltage at all to make the current to go forwards. So we wouldn't uh, lose any voltage or any um, uh, energy through the diode. So this is what ideally would happen, but it of course never does. It's going to consume some voltage. And because this is not what truly happens, we, we approximate it as, all right, let's, let's keep this approximation that we, we can never go backwards, but we do have a voltage drop that's fixed and it's always 0.7 we never we never have this weird transition that red line it'll always be either off where it's blocking current or on where it's consuming 0.7 volts and so this is the approximation of a diode so there's the three lines the red line is the uh, the real diode the real curve the green line is the ideal, what we wish the diode would behave like, and the orange is what we assume it's going to behave like. And typically this is what we'll use in our problems. It'll consume 0.7 or maybe other voltages if it's an LED or a different diode that consumes more voltage. But it'll be specified as the forward volt voltage. Um, but it'll be constant and it'll allow any amount of current through it as long as the voltage consumes um, that specified forward voltage. Um, I hope this helps clarifying that figure. Again, that's figure 3.6. Thanks.